Hello, welcome to this part of the tutorial. Today we want to model a multi-layer reservoir. Um, so we'll just briefly look at the data we have available and then we we'll move straight into the modeling. So we have a field and a well SC6. Um, the layers of the reservoir are about a hundred feet apart. The first one, okay, let's just go right into the data. The first one is at um, 10,000 feet. And the other one is at 11,000 feet, so just a difference of 1,000 feet. So that's what I'm trying to say here. A thousand feet apart, both reservoirs produce commingly. What that means is, the um, produced a single tubing. You know, this one drains into the well, and both both reservoirs drain into the well, and then they are produced from a single tubing at the surface. So um, the tubing is linked to the the flow air, the choke manifold, and then um, to a, a single separator. So if you look at this data, you discover the separator pressure is the same for both of them. Of course, it's because it's a single separator that is separating the fluid coming in. So we look at the gas gravity of the different fluids. The first one, the upper layer, is at 0 0.6. And the lower layer is 0 0.7. Let me at this point say that this well is um, actually producing a triangle gas. That, what that means is it's actually gas well, but as condensates present. So at the surface, where the pressure reduces, you have condensates coming out. And that is why you're having condensate gravity. So we have for the upper section, the condensate gravity is 50 API, while for the lower is 45. We also have the WGR, that's the water gas ratio. So we're having water production from this wall too. Okay, so we have condensate ratio. So we um for every one million scope of gas, we're producing three stock down barrels of oil. Okay. So that's for the upper section, and then we are producing ten stock down barrels per one million scope of um gas for the lower section. Okay, now let's also look at the other one. So we have perforation interval. This one is perforated 50 feet. Of course, um, it's the entire piston that is being perforated for this well. So this well is actually 50 feet thick, right? So that is it. It's actually 50 feet thick. And then this other one is 30 feet um, thick. Sorry, the reservoir. I'm talking about well, 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 well. It's the same well draining two different reservoirs. Okay. Two different layers of the same reservoir. Uh, yeah, the reservoir have different properties, by the way. Okay, so we have um, the upper section of the reservoir has a permeability of 15 millidarsi, while the lower section has 20 millidarsi. The pressures are also different, um, about 100 psi difference. Okay, what again is different? Nothing is different. The well, since it's the same well, so the radius of the well is the same. The porosity is the same, surprisingly. Then the Connect water saturation is also the same. The skin as the skin is also the same, so they're damaged equally. Okay, that's um actually wonderful. So we have um this is the downhole section. We have a common tubing, like I said, draining both of them, and then a casing. So the well is cased at ten thousand feet, and then um the tubing is installed at nine thousand five hundred feet. Okay. Um, so let's also look at, okay, this is, uh, we, we want to model this anyway, but this is the result I got. So we're going to model it again and see if we get the same result. I'm just looking at the data. Okay, that's all for the data we have. So let's move right into the modeling. Now, this is our software, the Petroleum Expert software. Um, I have explained sections of this before, but for, um, uh, for the sake of clarity, and um, so as not to, to avoid assumptions, I'm going to go through them again. So we have um, this section. Now, the different screens we have here, we have about six of them. One, two, three, right? This is four, five, and six. These different sections can be assessed from the menu here. For instance, if you click on options and you click on options, the screen you have come up. This screen here can also be called by double clicking on the first section here right so you see the same screen now the next one is the pvt parameters 
So after setting up this one, we should have PVT here. So let's just do that. I'm going to click on this. Then set this. It's not an oil well. It's actually a gas well. So, okay. Now that's the only thing I'm going to change. We are using tubing flow and it's a producer well, not an injection well. The well is cased. So there are no sun control. It's just a um, casing. No. And then it's a... Um, the inflow type is not single okay it's it's single so it's only when you're doing multilateral well that you change this so for now we'll still leave it at single yeah that's because it is coming out so it's coming out um, um single stage separation all these ones these ones are not very important at the moment since you're not looking at surface facility that much we are doing more of um, the down all the world stuff. So we'll leave every other thing at their default. Now, don't forget, if you're doing this for a company, you should supply this information. The company, the field, the location, and all those. Um, this is a simulation um, a tutorial, so I'll leave those ones. So I'll click on done. And now if you look at my screen, so we have more options at the menu now. We have PVT. Now, if you click on this PVT and input data, the screen that comes up can also be called by double clicking on this. So that's that the same screen. So we'll supply the data for this one. Now, notice we have um, two um, layers of uh, reservoir. But the PVT parameters is only requesting for information for one. So you can choose any of the layers. For me, I'm going to choose the first layer as upper layer supply the information here now as you continue the simulation you get to the point where you have to supply the information for both layers so this one is just generally to uh, initiate to initialize the model so any of the layers you pick won't really affect your result having said that let's supply the data so for the first layer I'm having gas gravity of 0 0.6 that specific gravity the pressure at the separator is 250 psi condensate is um three condensate gravity is at 50 so this is a lighter oil than for the lower section you know the higher the api gravity the lighter the oil right okay so we also have water to gas ratio of a five so the upper section is not producing much water as the lower section the possible explanation to this might be that there is um, an active water drive an aquifer below so since um, the other the lower layer is a thousand feet lower than deeper than the upper section it might be said that it is closer to the water zone and then um, the reason for the high water gas pressure okay now now the impurities are zero okay so water salinity we have about a hundred thousand a hundred thousand of that is that hundred thousand one two three okay that, that's a hundred thousand parts per million there are no impurities so i'm gonna leave that i do not have lab data to calibrate this so just leave that at that and then go down now the next thing to do is i'll love to supply this before going for the ipr data now this is the equipment data you can also get that by going to system equipment right so alternatively you can click on the screen double click here and it brings up the same so I'm gonna supply everything except the surface equipment hello what's happening to my system so I'll select all but unselect the surface equipment the reason is I'm not modeling surface equipment if I want to do surface equipment I'll do that using gap so for this tutorial we're just looking at the well uh, the well so we're using um, modeling every other thing except for the surface equipment so I'll go edit and then look at the deviation survey for the deviation survey we have um it's a vertical well that starts at the surface the surface is usually taken at zero so zero zero and then it's um it ends at 10,000 so like I said can take the data for just the first section data for just the first the upper layer that's what I'm using all through you get to a point where you have to supply this for both layers like I said
Now I have um, just the tubing and the casings. So I'll quickly supply those ones for my downhole equipment. So the tubing was installed at 9,500, while the casing was installed at, um, at 10,000 feet. The diameter, yeah, diameter of the tubing, inside diameter for tubing, what was there? 4.67, okay. And then for the casing, we have um, 6.1. Okay, not very large. It's okay. Okay, so I can go down. Now you're looking at the geothermal gradient. Okay, so for geothermal gradient, the at the surface the temperature is uh, at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and down all at 10,000 feet, the temperature is at 230 degrees Fahrenheit. Since it's a gas well, we should be having overall B2 of um. um three or five um, it should not be as high as for oil wells and the pt is about eight the overall a transfer coefficient okay so i will go down and down i think that's all you can actually draw the down hole here so yeah that's where i got this diagram here so that's how i got this diagram so let's look at it again and then maybe we can just compare. So that's that. So you see both of them. Okay, so let's proceed with our simulation. So I finish, I go in. So I'm done with that. Now we can go to the IPR section. This is actually where you supply the data for both layers of the reservoir. So if I click on this, you can also call up the screen by um, going to um, system inflow performance right so it's the same thing now we're gonna look at uh, what our what uh, reservoir model are you gonna use you're gonna use multi-layer dp loss in world war yeah so this this will help us this will allow us to enter information for the different layers of our reservoir Okay, so uh, I'll go first by supplying the temperature. The temperature I told you at the reservoir it rose to 230 degrees Fahrenheit, not the unit place. So the uh, unit is still at degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so let's proceed. I've selected the model. So the next thing is to input the data for the model. Now, you see the screen allowing you to enter layers. So we have about... Um, many layers you can enter up to I think 50 layers here so 49 layers you can but we are just have two layers now um, I'm not gonna enter information for two layers I'll actually enter information for three layers so the first one is um perforated layer the second one will be a blank layer to denote the section that separation between the upper and the lower section then the third one is also a perforated layer. So this is my upper layer, this is my lower layer, and this is just that separation between the upper and the lower layer, right? So I think that should be enough. Uh, the correlation, we can use any of these. I'm going to use petroleum experts for the correlation. And you can look up what these correlations do, and then so as to uh, give you, make you, you know, just to know which correlation to choose at any point in time. The skin will be entered by and later on here. So for the measured depth, okay, the upper layer is at um, 10,000, right? So 10,000, that's the measured depth. The true vertical depth, too, is at 10,000. Now for our um, upper layer, it is perforated. The thickness is um, 50 feet, so this will be up to 10,000. 50 all right sorry 10,050 is that 1050 yeah 10,050 so the same thing for this now the lower section actually starts at 11,000 so now this uh, sorry is at to be 11,000 now between here and here we have about a hundred feet right
Okay, so this should be um the the thickness of um the lower layer is thirty. So we have eleven thousand and thirty feet, and then it's the same thing for this eleven thousand and thirty feet. It says eleven thousand. Okay, so so that's that. On this blank layer, um, it's necessary so as to show that this layer they are not actually together they're separated by um i will not conclude at this moment to say that there's no cross flow but um i, I can just say okay let's just assume this is an impermeable layer like a layer with very low um, permeability so there are no communications it's just to show that these are two different layers okay let's quickly enter the parameters so the layer pressure is um, 3,500 for the upper layer, right? That is 3,500. The flowing radius is um, 0 0.254, and the layer roughness is 0 0.001. Yeah, it's the same for both of them. 0 0.001. Uh, for this one, not really necessary, but I'll just supply the same information for them. Two five four zero point zero zero one now zero point two five four and then the pressure here is at three thousand six hundred. Okay, so let's input the PVT parameters. So the layer gas gravity. Now this is where you enter the gravities for the different layers. For the first layer we had zero point six condensate gravity condensate ratio was at 3 and then water ratio was at 5 for the first layer you can validate to see if the information are valid so it says valid now the model I'll choose a model so the layer permeability permeability for this model is 15 millidarsi this information can be gotten from here so so it doesn't look like I'm just supplying information <laughs> From nowhere, so this is it for the upper layer. Permeability is this. These are the layer pressures I actually entered there as a this. Uh, so, this is a perforation interval, which I told you is equivalent to the piston thickness because it's the entire piston that was perforated. So, this is um, the well bore radius and all that. So, okay, so let's continue. The drainage area is 300. The jet shift factor, our well is at the center of um, a square um, reservoir or something like that. So the jet shift factor for such um, position is 31.6. Uh, you can look up literatures on this jet uh, shift factor. So well bore radius is at um, 0.354. The perforation interval, I told you, is entire basin. So that was 50 feet. The time since production started, it's about um, a thousand, a hundred days, right? The layer porosity is um, 0.25. And then coolant water saturation was at 0.3. Okay, that's for the first layer. So we can input the skin. The skin is uh, 5. So before I come back, the other one should be calculated. So if I validate, so it's valid. Go. Uh, okay. So we do the same for this other layer. Gas gravity 0.7. Condensate gas um, ratio for this one was 10. For water, we also had 10. So producing as much oil as water. Okay. So for the model, we also do the same thing. Permeability 20. Oh, the permeability is at 20, sorry. Drainage area, I think the same thing, 300. Dasher factor is the same thing, 1.6. Layer well bore radius. And the same 0 0.254 perforation interval for this one was smaller 30 feet. Uh, production 100 days layer 
porosity. Porosity is at um, 0.25, same with the upper section. Corner water saturation is the same with the upper section, 0.3. Okay, so the skin is the same. Okay, I think that's all. That's all, that's all, that's all. If you go back and come back, I think you're good to go. The next thing is to calculate the RPR. So I'll stay here and then I'll just click on calculate. Okay, so that's what we have. Uh, that's what we have. So this is um, the IPR plot. If you look at this, let's take some time to explore this plot before we proceed. Now we have layer one, which is this one, the first line here. That's the upper layer. Layer three is our lower layer. Notice there was a blank layer in between. That can be taught as layer two. But the layer two is just there to show that there is a separation between the upper and the lower layer, right? So I told you that before. So now this is the combined IPR for both layers. So it's just like adding both of them together to get this. Oh, so just like that. So if, um, a typical example is if you add this, the absolute open flow potential for layer one and layer three, you should have that for the combined layer. It's just adding both of them together. So this is that. Okay, so we're now we're plotting rate. Uh, if you look at this, you discover it's actually gas rate because it's a gas well, gas rate against um, the pressure. So for the IPR, um, there are no variables. Are there variables you can, yeah, none. Or we just have test point, which is not what I want to do. Okay, so that's that for this. Of course, you know what this IPR plot is. It just shows um, the highest and the lowest rate at which you can produce this well. Now let's imagine that there are no barriers, no friction losses, no nothing, all those um, um, pressure losses along the line. Then this is the highest rate at which you can produce this well. So when we say AOF, absolute open flow, so where there are no losses in the system, so everything just moves smoothly, then the rate at which you're producing from this well should be at 53.091 million scoff per day. Wow, that's um, so much money. But in reality, that's not possible. Now, let's say... Um, okay. So, um, this also shows responses to pressure as the pressure reduces and as the pressure increases. What actually happens? So, um, okay, so let's look at this result in detail. So you can export this data. You can export it, the calculation result, or you can export maybe everything. Either to a printer, to a file, to clipboard, to screen, or whatever. So all you have to do is just select the format, um, the report, uh, where you want to export the report to. Most of the time, what I do is I export to clipboard so that I can easily paste on any document. So, But you can also export a file. Let's look at this file or printer and then I will just click on print I should open up the print dialog box for me with the data I want to print okay so as a print dialog box and then you choose a location and all that uh, that's not what I want to do at the moment okay so I am done with this so I go that's all that's all uh, next thing which we want to do is um, to look at uh, sensitivity analysis to actually check the production rate of this well, right? So we have um, surface conditions. Uh, so in the light of the surface conditions, how many barrels can we produce from the well? So let's look at uh, what was the surface uh, pressure. Let's see if I actually wrote down the surface pressure. The well head pressure, did I? No, I didn't. Okay, I think it says that. Hmm. 
not four variables. Let's no aesthetic variables. Top node pressure, let's use a thousand psi. Okay, so I'll continue. I'm not gonna look at any variables for now, so I'll just calculate see what we get. Okay, so we're done with the calculation. So from these, if you look at solution details, and then you look at inflow layers. In fact, from here you can look at system totals. So this is um, the well head and the first node. Luckily for us, our well head is our first node. So you're having the same results. We have the total skin and all that pressure losses, total skin, all the calculations. These are the gas rate, the water rates, the all that. But this is where I actually want to look at. This will give you information about the contribution from each of the layers. So that is very important for you to know what each layer is actually contributing. So if you click on this, you'll discover that our top layer, that the gas rate top layer is contributing um, 22, 22 22.7674 million scoff per day. And the bottom layer is only contributing 16.254 millions of per day right so the total of this will give you what server you're having here if you add this to this okay so notice there's nothing here in the middle layer so since there is no value no production value for the middle layer neither for gas oil water liquid none so we can say there is no cross flow between those two layers so the oh, top layer is just producing on its own and it's not communicating with the bottom layer. That's why there are, there are no production here. So the only thing we have is just pressure losses here, which is very fine, very okay. Okay, so that's that. This one is very important to know the contribution from each layer. Uh, you can plot the system um, total, the system production, so as to know. Okay, so this is um, on the pseudo steady states, and this is what we actually have. Uh, that's the, the production rates. So you're producing about, um, that should be about 30, um, I don't know, 38 or 39. Okay, so let me just bring this up. Uh, options, mouse readout. So I'll show that. Done. Okay, so let's look at what do we have there. So keep your eye on this. So we should be having about, um, let's look at it. Yeah, about 38. About 38 million scoff per day so that's that will be a production I think we can get a value from somewhere here yeah gas rate 38.866 million scoff and that's what we're having okay so that is all about this um, tutorial that's how to model a multi-layer um, reservoir and um, a single well draining that in a um, commingled flow then how to determine if there is cross flow between the layers or not uh, that's all for the tutorial. Thank you very much for watching the tutorial. Uh, we look forward to meeting you some other time. Thank you. Have a nice day.